I will just shortly introduce that David Kusukukela, uh, and uh, I'm happy that you're here to give this presentation. She's an expert in conflict resolution and conflict transformation with over 30 years of experience in reconciliation and media peace building programs. And, uh, in post-conflict countries, in monitoring, in evaluation and recommendation, as well as dealing with the past. And she has a lot of experience in Africa. And um, she just told me that she also wrote a lot of books. Uh, one is about uh, um, the art of conflict or how to stay sane. Uh, the other one is about Rwanda, work of food or work of evil. And the third one is a novel, Food the Duffic, and uh, uh, she has some of the books here, if you want to buy them, <laughs> you can do it afterwards. I afterwards. <laughs> don't want to buy them afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> and this course is about um, peace building and mediation, and we will have a special look on the case of Mali. We will present us the case of Mali, there will be a role play, another one. <laughs> I'm sure you will enjoy this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much, Colin. Thank you. Just a technical question. Can we have the PowerPoint afterwards? Pascal? Yes. Yes and yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Because, uh, it's a very good question because uh, I would probably flip over um, then quite quickly. As we don't have, we only have 20 minutes, I think. Yes? Corinne, okay. So first of all, I would like to say hello and say it's a pleasure to be uh, invited with you today. I have listened to you on Tuesday and this morning, and I already heard that you are an excellent group, and that I'm going to be working hard to make you interested in what I'm going to say. Um, the way I start usually is always the same. If you... Um, agree, you take five seconds just for yourself, you erase a little bit what happened this morning, you breathe in and you tell yourself that you're ready to start a new page. Okay? Shall we do that so that things kind of go down slowly? Thank you. Okay. So, first of all, I'm going to explain to you, I have nothing to teach you. The only thing I can do is share with you to what type of mediation I have come to through various um, theories I've gone through and through various studies. So, uh, what I want to show you is that thing doesn't work. Me neither. Okay. So, I guess, <coughs> voila, um, I want to show you that in peace building, if you want to use mediation, you're kindly invited in my perspective, again, you are going to do whatever you wish afterwards, but in my perspective, you're kindly invited, if you use mediation, to use the five process mediation, the five steps from mediation. And this is how, what I'm going to explain to you, how I'm going to use that for peace building. Okay? That's the setting. So, of course, you have parallels and similarities, shaping the conflict, what is the political, economic and sociocultural context, what are emergent political, economic, ecological and social issues, which are things you always know, but it's always nice to have a kind of piece of paper where you keep that in mind. Never forget that um, to have preparation. As Antje said this morning, mediation is preparation, 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 and guess what? Nothing works the way you thought it would, but it gives you enough confidence to let go and really go with the flow. Because mediation is to go with the flow. And um, as well, to accept that we have to go through a tunnel 
And in the tunnel, there is a, excuse my English, damned confusion. So you have to go through a lot of confusion and mess and everything. And then after the tunnel, of course, there is some bright sun or not. But at least you have to go through. If you think if you can skip the tunnel and fly through mediation like in a brave new world, you're not in the right world. Really, mediation is about diving into it and being confused. Okay? So, what do I use? I use the five phases of no, um, looking. So, as I said at lunchtime, if I may repeat myself, sorry for the others. <laughs> I studied at the George Mason University in the States uh, with Sarah Cobb about conflictology, and this is really how it started. And it started because I was, at one point in my life, an ambassador in Rwanda after the genocide. So, which means that one thing led to the other, and then I thought, okay, I leave everything, and then I really work only now in questions of reconciliation, dealing with the past, and going through the tunnel. Because I was, I would say, lucky enough to belong to the thinking think tank group uh, in Kigali in 97, of the people who were thinking, how are we going to build up the Kachacha, which is a kind of copy of the South African Truth and Reconciliation process. But of course, you can't compare things and, and things are always different. So this is how it all started. And then I thought in my head, well, there must be parallels between family conflict and international conflict. I'm sure there is something that you can learn that must be similar. So this is how I ended in the States and worked there for a while and studied. And then I came back to London, um, to the Cedar, which for me is the number one mediation school. And then, of course, to various other um, schools. But I met Mukin um, in Howard um, University. And I think he's one of the best, for me, mediator as a start. Again, I want to very to emphasize there is not one mediation. It's like playing the piano. One thing is sure. You can't play Liszt or Chopin if you haven't started you know, with Dorémy Fassal and, and for a while. So I'm talking about the beginning and the starting. The way you play Liszt and Chopin afterwards is your business. But you have to go through a process of learning something standardized. Otherwise, you know, everybody is everything. It's my opinion. Please, you're not obliged to follow. So looking for me is uh, somebody I really like. I can talk as well <coughs> about another person, but that's later if we come to personal discussions. Um, I met, I um, had several workshops as well with Jeff Crivis. And Jeff Crivis uh, wrote about improvisational negotiation and mediation. And I liked him because he is the mediator of the Hollywood stars. And he is talking always about 500 to 600 millions that are at stake. So he knows how to do it. And I, he's a fantastic, really, guy. If you come across him, he gives a classes as well in London, but of course mainly in Malibu, um, in the university. But I think mediation has to be fun as well, in a way. And I want to underline, mediation is about life something fun and not tragic and has nothing to do with something I want for you. It has to do with I bring you ways for you to talk together, but I really, I don't give a damn about the solution you choose. I think it's very important, this um, philosophy. Okay, I continue. Um, you have already a question, but if you have a question, it's, it's terribly. His name. We will never finish. Sorry. Jeff. My name. Jeff Craig. Jeff Crivis. K. R-I-V-I-S. Um, of course, nobody, I think, can do anything in mediation without having met at least once in your life Mr. Rosenberg, which was my case, and it was some, somebody who gave me a gift. I did an immersion with him when I was 50, uh, and then I met him and we talked together. And I think it's really something very important as far as the com communication is concerned but mainly, in my opinion, as far as feelings are concerned. So I think he's really an innovator in the, um, in the field of feelings. Then, of course, Galtung is another tool that uh, is Mr. Pascal's baby, um, with the triangle we have already seen. But I think it's important to keep him in mind as well. 
would like to correct. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is that wrong? Well, I like his approach, but I'm not You're his, his baby. baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's not his baby. In neither sense. <laughs> <laughs> then, of course, I would recommend, because uh, you are here as well to see what, what you can do, I would recommend everything that Howard Negotiations and um, a program does, mainly um, the books from... Um, Uri, um, how to get to the know, which is the new yeah. one, because before we, ha we had how to get to the yes. Yeah. And mm -hmm. why did he write the second book? The first book we got to the yes, because in the 80s, everybody wanted, you know, to, to divide into, okay, $10,000, okay, 5000 here, 5000 there. What happened in the end, that everybody was, it's not my, no, my word, it's um, Uri's word, and Fischer, he said then people are equally dissatisfied, which is a damn shit. I mean, you are in this and then we leave, and there's a what facts mediation. So that's not okay. So he thought it over, and he did a new book, which is called How to Get to the No, because he understood that if you are human, you can't say yes immediately. If I say, okay, I owe you $5,000, I give you $5,000. She says, oh, she gave me $5,000. Well, something is wrong here. So we have to bargain. Because we are human beings, we need bargaining. So I have to start saying, listen, I give you only 2,000. And then we bargain for half an hour and we get to a point. So we have to go through no before getting to the yes. And finally, how to go about peace negotiations. I really like what, it's not only because I belong to the mediation support unit in New York, but from the UN, but I really like what the BCPR has put together in the theories about peace, peace mapping, peace building, peace prevention, um, <laughs> and so forth. So that's a little bit my feel, okay? Oh, and I forgot, the last one, I didn't write it, um, is, as you understood now, I like the States. <laughs> they um, gave me a lot, I think. Um, I started to attend a lot of workshops on um, neurolinguistic neuro programming. And then I thought, okay, everybody is doing NLP here, that's not okay. How can I do a little bit more? So I worked with Tony Robbins and his assistant in San Diego, and her name is um, Chloe Madanes, and she wrote a book, very interesting book, she sold two million exemplars, called Relationship Breakthroughs. This lady, Chloe Madanes, then I did a diploma with her because I thought it was interesting as well to do some neuro-linguistic programming because, and I think our friend for tomorrow will agree with me, a lot of things in mediation are linked to beliefs. Okay? Not only religious beliefs, but to beliefs. And the belief is, if I believe that if I, you know, I'm going to, to come to you and you're going to kiss me, it will happen. <laughs> uh, usually, what you believe happens. But on the same way, what you believe will not happen doesn't happen either, you see? So, the world of the people who are in mediation and in negotiations, it's interesting to explore a little bit what their beliefs are, okay? And I give another example. What do you think should happen for you, for you to be, to, to be and feel happy? At this moment or in life? At this moment. I could come, come with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, she thinks, her belief is that the cup, a cup of coffee will give her some happiness, okay? What happens if after the cup of coffee you're still not happy? <laughs> that gives me a lot of information at the mediation table, and I think, okay, that girl needs liters of coffee. <laughs> and so on. It's just to show you that the question of neurolinguistic programming and beliefs is a huge field, and I would really kindly advise you to explore it as well, but I'm sure you're going to talk about it as well. It crosses two other fields the field of intercultural mediation and of course and the field of religious or mediation called um, interfaith uh, whatever you name it uh, mediation okay that's a little bit my landscape so what i do usually um, the mali is just one i did in march 
But uh, very often, what I do when I come to the negotiation table with various actors, of course, here are the parallel phases between mediation and peace building. And I always ask, I really follow a pattern, which is what happened co becomes the conflict profile, how do you feel becomes the conflict causes and what do you feel about it. The third one, what would you like, becomes actors, analysis and relationships. And then four, conflict dynamics, interests, goals and positions. And five, peace settlement or settlement agreements. I just make parallels between the two so that you see that it's possible to... You will get the... Um, but if you have a problem, <laughs> no problem, feel free, really, I'm here for you, so, um, no, how about no? Yes, maybe, no, but <laughs> <laughs> not now, <laughs> not now, later, not now, okay, can we have it backwards here, yeah? Yeah, backspace. Then, yes, is there a possibility to go backwards? Left. Backspace. Okay. Here? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Ah, well, yes. Thank you so much. Um, I just want to give a little bit of definitions because in the definition you sometimes have as well some answers. Uh, definition, um, DIFI, of course the British who are my guests, <laughs> I said I like London because of that. Because they are, you know, I don't know why but I'm, I'm French, I sorry, I forgot to say that. We could but probably you can see it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I love that in England. Um, they are very conscientious and they do mediation through the five steps and they succeed. And this Anglo Saxon way of going at it is really something that I learned a lot from. Really, I must say. So, defeat. Um, the Department of Foreign Affairs takes place when two or more parties find their interests incompatible. I like that, interests incompatible. Um, don't know if it works for religions, but we can talk half an hour about it. Express hostile attitude, it's a question of behaviours. Or take action which damages the other party's ability to pursue their interests. I like that definition because I think it gives <coughs> something to mull over. Then we have, I like the use of peace terms. Conflict resolution addresses and resolves the deep rooted sources of conflict, of course. It includes fostering positive attitudes and generating trust through re reconciliation. <coughs> so, the word, I think what is important here is really the word reconciliation initiatives and strengthening the institution through which the parties interact peacefully. It's just to think a little bit. And you'd show me when I when I have to be finished going. Maybe Five minutes. Five okay. minutes. Um, conflict transformation goes beyond the concept of conflict resolution, and that it requires a transformation of the parties, their relationships to each other. Yes. What I noticed this morning, if I may give you my feedback, and it's never a judgment from my side because who I am. I mean, I just did a few mediations. So, but the feedback about what I saw or what I felt was because it was not really explained what type of mediation you were having. Things were kind of uh, uh, flying a little bit around, it seemed to me, but maybe I didn't hear the beginning. So I think it's important in the beginning to explain, are you doing a mediation that is really solution-oriented? So you want you know, a quick solution because you know we have to go, whatever, humanitarian convoy has to go through, so mediation, quick solution here. Or do you want a transformative mediation in which case people have to learn to abandon something incredible and it takes a huge amount of time, which is the idea that I am right and you are wrong. And that takes a hell of a lot of time. But when this uh, tipping point happens, then everything kind of whoops goes on the other side, and then you can start what is called a transformative mediation. It transforms you and me as well. It doesn't mean I'm going to go with you every day to the cinema or love you forever, but at least I understood what you want, which is already the beginning of something. Okay, so that's a question about the word transformation. Then. Um, I like the Bell Hall Foundation as well. I, you know, you know them a little bit, Pascal Mier and too, uh, in Berlin. And especially for Germans, I like the way Germans go at uh, reconciliation issues because they have 
They had to work inside their country on two issues, of course, the Second World War, but not only. They had to work a lot on the question of how to reunite two blocks of ex-Sovietic blocks and, you know, the main Germany. And this is, it, it seems, you know, like that, but these were two world visions where it seemed impossible to put people together. I can't say from Monday to Tuesday, hey, you know, Lenin, nothing. And now, Kennedy is, okay, this side. So, it needs a lot of um, mediation skills and, I would say, a lot of will to reunite in one nation. And I think they have shown that, the Germans, really. Okay, what else? What is important as well, what I did, I was uh, teaching the conflict mapping in Madagascar to the group um, of people who are preparing uh, the elections. Conflict mapping is really something interesting because it goes away from the intellectual part. The intellectual part is really writing like that. If you do the mapping, you take the other side of your brain and you, you do a design and then you, you have implications with the things with another that you would never have if you would write it chronologically. You see what I mean? Yeah. So the question of mapping or designing is very important in conflict. I attended in um, Admont in Austria a one-week course um, <coughs> where they showed that conflict is energy, as we know, but conflict is as well, um, have you ever tried to put the people in a room and you put them, stand them here or there, and you see how they interact. And it's something very interesting, and then you ask the people, what do you feel towards this or that? And um, it's another way of getting at conflict than only having sitting sessions of mediations. Yes, you see what I mean? Uh, if you want to see uh, Admont, I can give you, they have very, very nice one week uh, mediation, yearly um, trainings. So visual conflict mapping, that's okay. <coughs> no, pas du tout, pas du tout, encore moins. <laughs> Alors, yes, I think it's one. We always, uh, and I really have learned that in uh, in conflictology, we always think about conflict as one thing. You know, happened on the third of November, and that's it. And you know, you threw whatever on the floor or the work, you know. But what is interesting is really to see how people translate the fact or what they say uh, about what triggered the conflict. And what is interesting in a mediation is to see that nobody has the same answer, of course. But in the answers, you have already the seeds for options and solutions for the conflict resolution. You see what I mean? So the point of view. What triggered the conflict for you? So I said, well, you know, that since years and years, blah, blah, blah. And that you would say, no, no, no. I met on Tuesday a lady from, um, she was Indian, and she was dealing with the conflict in Srinagar. A very interesting lady. I don't know if uh, you remember her. But yeah, anyhow, what she said to me, what was interesting is that as long as people don't agree on what the conflict is, and what triggered it, there is absolutely no way of going out of the conflict. But we spent long, long time saying, okay, what triggered the conflict? How did it start for you? So this is really something, never forget that. And understand that the conflict is something that has a cycle and moves forward. You are up there. It moves forward and it's never the same in the same place. If I take money, you wouldn't see any conflict um, in Baku. Okay? Not anymore, um, it's, which is not the same as Timbuktu. So when you speak about conflict, say where it is and what stage of the conflict we are in and the fact that it's moving. Okay. Um, am I about at the end of it? Actors are important, of course, as you might understand. Causes are important. Relationships. Interests and goals, you can find that in any book. Identifying peace capacities, which is, this is something quite interesting and new. What already exists? You know, instead of starting everything from scratch, ask the people, do you know of anything that already 
exist. To have you got an idea is, is somebody already, and you have always groups or uh, NGOs on the ground who already have an idea. Um, yes, we know about that. That's the pre-violence conflict identifying many parties causes opening an unexpected path towards dialogue and peacemaking. And then that was the end of it. Uh, then I come back to Mali. Why a giraffe? Because I, we had a, a person last time who talked about Marshall Rosenberg and uh, yes. it's uh, somebody we all like. But what I like in him is the idea, probably that's my belief, huh? <laughs> it can change, but it's my belief. My belief is that um, when he took the giraffe as the animal who really is, is the most symptomatic of non-violence, he wanted to show that's the animal that is above. You know, as a mediator, you can't be in the story. You have to really be above. Take as much elevators as you can during the mediation. You kind of whoop. If you could, the, the image would be the following. You know these chairs at the doctors, and you push them, and then you go a little bit above the thing. So the giraffe is always above the situation, and it's not uh, or, it's and. It has the biggest heart of the whole um, animals on Earth. So if you put both together, this capacity to be above and having a big heart, then you are in nonviolent communication mood. And uh, I like this sentence, as our cultural conditioning often leads our attention directions and like to get us what we want, peace building serves as an ongoing reminder to focus our attention on places that have the poten potential to yield what we are seeking. And um, I just wanted to add something to that. When you see that something doesn't work in a mediation, please, do not do more of something that doesn't work because you will get the same result. Okay? So if you have a key that doesn't go in the lock, don't force it. It doesn't work, okay, try something else. So please be very creative, as I've seen this morning. The caucus idea should have come immediately. And among, you have mediators, it seemed to me, but I want to shake you a little bit, it seemed to me as you had uh, two gurus called mediators who knew everything. But the parties have to intervene as well, saying, listen, I would like to have a cup of coffee, or too many people around this table, or could we do a caucus or something? It's something that has to be more fluid and not two people knowing what's, what's happening next. That struck me. And the other thing, the, the mediator is responsible for the process, okay? So I am very directive for the process. First part, this blah, 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 this is what's going to happen, do you agree, blah, blah, blah. Okay, second part, maybe we're going to do this, do you need some rest or not? I am the, really the queen of the process. I do not intervene in the solutions. You see the difference? I build trust, and this is probably <coughs> I, one of the mediations I'm the most proud of is, was am among Somali lords in South uh, Africa. Because really, Somali lords don't especially like women, <laughs> blonde women, and you know, <laughs> not at all. It's not their cup of tea, we would put it this way. But what was sure was that I did my utmost to help them talk together without any judgment. And if this is something you apply, it works. Okay? Fine. So that's my, just a little bit my presentation. Um, we go back to Mali. Do you have any questions before we go to Mali? Oh, that's that terrible sound when I have no question. I have people sleeping. Are you sleeping? Okay. No questions? You, you didn't quote anything from the French, right? Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> We've seen no quotation from, from, from the from French. But from, the, from the any French. Uh, yeah, that's interesting what you say. I wonder why. 
At some point you said uh, mediation has to be fun, something like this. Yes. And you know, we heard many things now during the Summer Academy, more you know, the cognitive dimension of it, the emotional dimension, we saw tools, etc. Stress that you can have, I think the mediators experienced it very much this morning. <laughs> but we never talked about fun. Yeah. So can you say something about but it? Pascal, that's my life philosophy. I, I, as a mediator, I'm convinced that whatever you do in your life, if you don't have a little bit of fun and pleasure, you don't do it right. Then you do it really. Uh, when I mean fun, I mean, I, I'll get back to you. I mean, it's something alive. And I really, when I feel in mediations, sometimes it happens, I say, you know what? I have the feeling we're going nowhere. So, but, but I'm myself. Why don't we have a break and, and regroup in five minutes? I am not in a model. I am myself. I have an incredible amount of drawers and tools, but I am mainly with the people. And this is what they feel, because after, I, I think it's fun when suddenly he has an idea for the other. You see what I mean in that sense? Pleasure and fun, yeah. But please, this is my, 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 my utmost prayer, don't take yourself too seriously as mediators. Because really, as we said in the, this morning, we don't want anything for others. I mean, if we happen sometimes to be at the right place with the right people, and sometimes you just get people to meet for half an hour. Okay, but if you sit thinking, I want a result at 10 to 10, it doesn't happen. I swear, it doesn't happen. I, I, I guess that, uh, that's why uh, French people are, are not good at mediation. Probably. Because they are too yeah. uh, goal oriented. Yes. Yes. And they are in a yes. very difficult political yes. situation at the moment yes. that has that's been right. going on for ages. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I just yes. want to share that the breakthrough between the Philippine government and the more Islamic liberation front was punctuated by humor at certain yes. points in time. Sure. But when the tension was very high, Emma Leslie would come in. Yeah. I want to give you two feedbacks because it, it reminds me uh, about that. Because Pascal has asked me to talk a little bit about my experience. It's, I can only share, I mean, teach, whatever, whatever. Share I can do my 30 years in the field. But what happened, um, I, it was in a very difficult situation. Where was it? Uh, I think it was in Thailand. Well, very difficult as well because of um, cultural issues, because whatever. So at one point, the people were fa facing each other, and I thought, it's, they were really looking at each other all the time like enemies, and nothing was happening. So I thought, OK, OK. So then I, I, I kind of played the game, and I said, OK, let's put it this way. I took the flip chart, and I said, well, if I understood you well, you said that, and he said that, and I wrote anything on the board. And suddenly, A said, no, no, he didn't say that. And I said, no, I didn't say that. So suddenly, I succeeded in them being together against me. And I thought, oh, yes, good. So that was it. So I really started together. So I went back to my mediation. You see, my idea is uh, you have something uh, uh, happening between the people. And the other thing, uh, that my, uh, before I forget, because I have so many stories, the other story was um, after one day and a half of another mediation, sorry, I can't remember, A and B, and lawyers and this and that, many people around the table. And we were going nowhere, and you know what happens after seven, six, seven hours? Whoops, we start again, like in the morning. And honestly, because it's me, I was so tired that I, I shouted at the people, which was, it's written in every book, please don't lose your temper, <laughs> don't shout at the people, uh, be very cautious and feel a 
philosophical. I did just the opposite. I looked at A, and I looked at B, and I said, you know what? I'm really getting tired. I'm, I'm, I'm not really interested anymore in that story. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we're going nowhere. And uh, so I looked at my watch, and I said, well, i give you 10 more minutes. And then, you know what? We agree. You, you, you will never get to any second degree. I see that. I mean, no, it, it happens. When sometimes it happens, we don't know where. So I give you 10 minutes. And then both, they went together. No, 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 no. <laughs> sharing stories to say about fun and being alive, it's, I didn't do it on purpose. I was really tired, and I meant it, but uh, um, so it happens sometimes. Right. Yes? You mentioned a good point about the lawyers, but so the lawyers, the advisors, like this morning, the advisors, those that are there behind doing this, or even like in the case of the lawyers who actually just want to push everyone out of the way and yeah. do the negotiations themselves. What is your approach when you first arrive on the scene and you realize you want to extract those people from the process in the most politically you know, correct way that you can so that you can really just focus on the people that matter for the ultimate outcome? I start usually meeting the lawyers alone for, before other consultants and say, okay, um, you want to play the game or can we agree about the deal? I mean, you have your role, I have mine. Um, can I have an understanding of what, how far you want to go, or how far do you want me to prevent of having mediation, or what? I, I'm trying to, you know, to, to build some confidence between lawyers, consultants, experts, specialists before. So what I do, but it depends as well on how people are ready or not. Usually, I see A alone and B alone, or I see A on the phone and B on the phone, or I ask them, is it okay for you? I don't see you because I see you already know. Is it okay? But I, I tell people what I do. If I see her half an hour alone, okay? And then she might say, well, if you see her half an hour, so say for me. Okay, fine, okay, or not. I give the people the possibility to intervene and I tell them what I'm doing, but I'm not going entering a room where I have 150 lawyers ready to shoot. Kind of, uh, ready to shoot. Okay, now. So I say, okay, this is either I do a caucus or I talk with them or I say, okay, we have two different agendas here, we have various issues. I do a lot of shuttle. As well. Have you ever, as a follow-up to the question, maybe, have you ever put yourself in a position from your experience where you said, you know, around the table, okay, lawyers, consultants, experts, out. No, I just I want, I just way. want, I just want a few minutes with yeah. the, sure. the, the decision makers. Absolutely. And what happened in that process? Well, it's either me or them. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just saying, like, what no, happens saying, uh, when I'm they left, okay. I guess the question is when they left the room. Mr. Madam, uh, is it okay for you to have a cup of coffee? We have somebody who has some croissant and coffee. I really would like to talk to A and B here alone because I still don't get it. And I think um, at that stage we don't have enough confidence in each other and, and I, I don't need to be a bit in the heart of the story. How is that for you? Do you have any, you know, problems with that or... Tell me if you have problems so we can maybe talk it over and they have a coffee before you go or how is that for you? And usually they leave afterwards. And do you find that to be more productive and then you have that one moment where A and B and it's sure. just you and A and B? Absolutely, always. Always. Um, but at the same time I have to be very careful if I do shuttle mediation that if she says something to me I have to ask her what do you oh, yeah. allow me to say to the other party? Okay? so that she knows, she has trust in me, so she's going to say, well, Brigitte, you can say that I stole $150,000, but you won't say, of course, that uh, uh, they're still in my pocket. And I'm okay, fine, so she stole $150,000, that's all. So I mean, you're very careful, which means you are very careful about your communications. I think that's important. Yep. Yeah, just to underline this, uh, the importance of this issue. It's a big issue, the, uh, the issue of time. As a mechanism to have a distance from the uh, from the from the, map, from the conflict, uh, it's all about finding a balance between uh, uh, the empathy that is required if we want to mediate. 
empathy with the parties you, when they suffer, and the distance that uh, keeps us uh, uh, efficient in, in doing yes. things. Exactly. And uh, it's uh, it's this balance between uh, if I take the metaphor of the giraffe, of the giraffe uh, yes. between the heart and the height. Exactly. Yeah. Too yeah. much heart prevents from seeing clearly. Exactly. The and if I and too much height, you don't have heart. Exactly. Because you are just above. Yeah, just if I if I would yeah uh, follow uh, another uh, metaphor from the medical field, since I'm from the health science, uh, I, I heard once a, a medical doctor in the pediatric uh, uh, department uh, uh, asking or telling the the assistant who who she was just crying because she was looking at a child suffering, uh, he told her, uh, here you work. Now, when you finish your work, when you go out, then you have the right to cry. But don't do it while you are working. So it, it's not uh, an easy uh, No, it's thing. not. And okay. just to react on this issue of lawyers, if I, uh, if I, talk, if I just, you allow me to quote Johan Galton, who is a friend of mine, he said that mediation is about creati creativity. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And the, the best mediators are uh, young female architectures. <laughs> and, and the worst are old male lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, well, I agree with you on, on one thing. It is very important to understand there is no other way of mediating than the way you are. B, it's very important you know a lot of issues about yourself because if you are, I was saying that at the table at dinner, um, at lunch, sorry, at lunch, um, if you are afraid of conflict, and I'm giving classes at the University in Geneva, and I've seen these young mediators who are so afraid of conflict, and I say, well, why don't you do something else? Because yeah. mediation is about facing conflict, about saying, okay, why don't you bring your anger out now? Why don't we really spend half an hour, you explain to me what you felt, where, where you were hurt, what happened to you, so that I can hear, that the other party can hear, but that you can hear a set yourself as well, the way you word it, that it comes out of you. So you, you need to, to uh, understand that you have to do a lot of mediation with yourself first. You have to be yourself. And thirdly, I think it's very important to accept that I have about 80 75 to 80 percent of what's so called success, but what success doesn't mean anything, of results, except the fact that many times it doesn't have any results. Okay? And that's the most difficult for an idiot, to accept that from the, from the beginning. Okay, Mali, thank you. I am at all yours at dinner and everything, and I leave after dinner. How is that? And then I sell my books and I tell you many other stories. <laughs> Okay, so we are going to play the following play, and I thought it was very important, if you can listen to me, I first distribute the roles, if you agree, and then I really start from scratch, then I explain the objective, and then you have uh, the work group. This is something that really happened, so I'm not going to give you the answer now, I'm only giving you the answer at 5 o'clock, the way we solved it, okay? So if I go very quickly through this, the issue, um, you have all your papers, so let's start with that. Um, may I? Sure. You are one, you remember the numbers please? Yes? You are one, two, three, four, five, M1, M2. One, two, three, four, five, tu joues? No. Tu joues pas. M1, M2. One, no? You don't play. One, one, two, three, four, five, M1, M2. One, two, three, four, five, M1. He plays, he plays. Okay. M2. Okay? So you will remember your numbers. Before I explain the case, the, the objective is the following. So we read with already an objective. This is what happened to me in March. I was asked by the, 
It's called Ecole de la Paix uh, in Bamako. Um, that was paid by the EU. Uh, entry. Uh, I was asked to join a mediation for these four groups, okay? Because the problem is or was, you can invent, of course. Uh, please understand that a great part of it is a fiction because many things I was not able or allowed to write. But what I wrote is what is on internet. You have four military groups in northern Mali. And as you might understand, they don't get on well at all. They have various problems because they never know who is doing what. People, you know, are armed people roam around. And we want to have a mediation between these four groups where the objective is you have to come up with solutions within the time frame, which is going to be four to five minutes. Um, we have four parties, the mediator one and the mediator two. And then the four things you have to answer on the flip chart, where the mediators one and two are going to be the speakers for the feedback in the plenary session. You're going to look into the four matters. A, what are the problems? Okay. B, what? do they want? What does one want? Two, three, four, what do they want? Three, what are the options? Okay. And then four, what are the solutions? So it's a mini kind of mini teeny tiny type of mediation, but at least you have a frame and you know one thing, you have only 45 minutes. You have four parties, you have two mediators, and one mediator can say at the other one, you write thing that, things down and I speak. I mean, the way you distribute roles is absolutely uh, uh, as you wish. <laughs> so, I give a short summary of the situation. The situation is the following, as we remember. Um, <coughs> You have a paper called um, Mali, um, Republic of Mali, where you have the president, prime minister. You have the land area, ethnicity, religion, economic growth. I thought what was interesting was to see that there are various groups in Mali, and not only Bambara and Sohai, but that there are many different, I say groups because ethnicity doesn't mean anything anymore in my understanding, but okay. Um, race, it's what they write, and religion. So that's the fact sheet. Then you have this sheet that explains Mali is really divided, it's like a butterfly. The left wing is the south, and the right wing is the Sahara and the desert. And the problem is happening, of course, since years, only in the right side of the, the butterfly wing. Um, you have, if I summarize it very quickly, you always had, since ages, problems between the South in Bamako and the so-called Tuareg in the North. Yes, called, and they, they put themselves together and they created a first movement called Mouvement National de Libération de Lazawad, called MNLA. And things were going on for years and years. There was all these fights and this and that. And they wanted to be independent. They were not independent. We're still attached to the South and so on. And suddenly, what happened in 2012, due to the, um, the Libyans forces who were kind of released coming down from the north and who were partly band bandits, partly jihadists, partly nameless. They empowered the what we call MNLA. They came to see the rebels and say, hey, you want to be independent? Okay, we're going to help you. Okay, give, give you uh, weapons and, and, and you know, support and, and visibility and, and you know, as we see you're tired of you. 
have had three, five hundred years, you're trying to be independent. Moreover, this is a belief, your skin is much lighter than the skin over there. I mean, you don't belong to that population anyhow, and so on and so forth. So this movement was called Ansardine and had inside a lot of um, Libyan jihadists. Okay? Then, additionally, came a group called Al-Qaeda au Maghreb Islamic, who were people coming from the, Isla from the Afghanistan area, who said, oh, there is a possibility there as well to fight, to bring some jihadists and some extremism, okay? Who joined the war? And all of a sudden, you had the government in 2012, the government of Mali, who was absolutely, you know, a little bit out uh, of the world. <laughs> and additionally, you had in the south a putsch of the government. Okay, so these were a little bit the story. <coughs> right, to just to give you to give you a, a broad explanation. Does that make sense? What I'm explaining yeah. so far? Okay. Then, of course, problems. This is why you are here for mediation. We have big, big problems. You had four parties, and of course, you have. Doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, Operation Serval from the French, who came in with General Bertrand Clément Bonnet, who said, hi everybody, I'm going to take care of all that. He has 5,100 military men, and of course it's his ex-colony, he knows about it, and you know, yeah, yeah. oh, you're from the African Union, hi, you're going to, you know, do what I'm going to say. That's a little bit the Operation Serval side, okay, then party two, you are uh, invited to play it this way. You have, of course, African-led support mission, 2,900 military men still, mainly from Nigeria, Burkina Faso, and so on. And the Major General Abdul Qadir is the decision maker. All the four are decision makers huh, at the mediation table. Fine, these people have their work to say as well. They have been invited there. Then you have, of course, the Malian army, the Malian army has two problems. They have only 2,000 men, and they are under very strong training of the EU. And the EU is paying a hell of a lot of money to have these trained to be good, and they are sent in the north, and they are, to say the least, but not judgment, they are very inefficient, okay? And so you have in the field, you just have to represent yourself, in the field, trainees, the Malian army who are at home, you know, I'm Malian, I'm at home, but I have the French giving me an advice and then the Nigerian guy saying you go left here, big problem. Then of course things are never easy in life, you have the MINUSMA, and the MINUSMA is a peacekeeping operation in Mali, and as you remember, peacekeeping are only, like in Rwanda, like in Kosovo, like everywhere, um, it's a defensive, it's an army who is here, who is observing things, writing down <coughs> human rights issues, but they are not here to shoot, you know, at the uh, Ansardine guy who is trying to uh, um, steal or, or rape or whatever. These are the four parties, and um, as you, s I wrote about it in fiction because I don't want to have a problem with the Malian army. <laughs> it's a fiction. So on page two, let me read that for you. January 2012, the Tuareg movement and uh, declares the liberation of the Azawad region, rebellion against the Malian government, which on this side has an internal military push, that toppled former president. There has been an interim government, elections and peacekeeping forces to implement the results, beginning of 2014. Yeah. So at least the South now is, um, the South is stabilized. Okay, by elections. But the peacekeeping forces have to make sure the South is okay too. Huh? Then now is the time of consolidation. June 2012, MLMA came into conflict with the Islamic extremist group called Ansardine and Jihad West Africa because after the Islamic began imposing the Sharia in Azawad. So you have to understand one thing which makes it very difficult. If you think the Tuaregs among themselves agree, you're on the wrong page. They have a conflict inside themselves as well. Some think they are independent. Some think they can be independent with the help of the South. Some think they can be independent with the help of the very extremist or the more extremist. So there are a lot of various groups um, of MLNA 
which is for them a problem too. Because if you come to the negotiation table in one voice, it's better. But if you have 10 people, you know, from the, the Tuareg, where everybody says something else, it's very difficult as well. Now, upon the request of the four generals, there are the generals, they, are, they put their names, heads of the military forces, so you have, you're going to have names. The UN mediation support in New York has provided a mediator who is going to mediate between the four parties and help. So, help identify the problems and situations, the various events. You may, of course, invent some new ones. Um, <coughs> that have triggered the conflict, the needs and interests of the various representatives of the four military parties, suggestions and brainstorming, and of course in the end you bring a solution which is a new modus operandi with people who will overlook it. Okay? So, my fourth pa uh, paper that I'm going to help you is this one. Um, yeah. Uh, where all the three like, like foreign forces, where they can participate in the government? Very good question, sorry, excellent question. The, um, the, um, yeah. the resolution, the UN, excuse me, background, background. Operation Serval is an ongoing French military operation. The aim of the operation is to oust Islamic militants in the north. It is based on the UN Security Council Resolution 2085 of December 20th, 2012 by an official request by the Malian. So the Malian addressed first a request on the Security Council and then the French suggested at the Security Council to enter first and to kind of do their opération serval, okay? But it's written nowhere that it just came in first. Then we had the second and the third and the fourth one, okay? So you're, you're working with that uh, supposition, yeah? You see what I mean? Um, then you have again, um, yes, a summary of opération serval. They have a huge amount of, of infantry, parachute, uh, uh, name it, Air Force. Then you have AFISMA, African led. Um... Could I suggest that? Yes. Do, 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 are we going to have any time? Like, I don't know. Now you have and time. Team in the exactly. Three. Exactly. We, that was my suggestion. Sorry. We are now stopping at that stage, and I am yours on request if you don't know what you have to do in groups of mediation. Okay? Uh, I, I, I just would like to ask, what are the relationships between all the four parties? Do they have relationships with all the armies? Because that's a, you know, a Here you have the parties who are going to be at the mediation table. Yes, mm -hmm. but they have relationships with all the Ah, yeah. then you have here, version Depending on who you are, you are invited to read your part. To prepare on a mediation on point Yeah, very good question. So you are going now, we are going to have um, four tables. Okay. Four, they are going to be different, as we understand. Okay. Four, we need four tables where we have party one, party two, party three, party four. Okay. A mediator one and a mediator two. They are going to identify together what the problems are, write it on the board, what they want. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want to do? You want? Three, what options do we have here? And four, what kind of solutions can we come up with? And this is going to be mediated by M1 and M2. And M1 and M2, after four, four, 45 minutes, are going to explain to the plenary what happened in their group. So you remember who you are? Yes. Who are you? Number four. Number four. Number four. Number four. Number four. Number four. Very good. 
question. I repeat. Number one is Operation Servant. Number two, everything linked to Operation. Number two is AFISMA, African Led International Support Mission to Mali. Number three is the Malian army in the north with the European Union training mission, which means the Malian are never alone. I mean, you have, if, I just explain, you have to understand their position. You are in your country, it's your army, you have, you're not alone, you have your trainees here who comes from, I don't know, from Holland or from, from whatever, uh, Ireland, uh, and you are supposed to be the leader, you know. Okay. And number four is, of course, the peacekeeping force, MINUSMA, who appears there as well. You know, they have their control, their patrolling, and everything. The mediator one and the mediator two agree on how they are going to work, because at the end, you will have flip charts. You will give us briefly what happened and the solutions you came up with. The idea is we need some organization. The objective is we need some organization in the north between the army because they are all at conflict. Yes. Uh, when you divide, you divide the uh, five. Like the yes. Yes. Five. Yes. Oh, I did five. Yes. Oh. Our number one and two is or are you no, she does one to five and then one to one. Then one to five and then one to six. Okay, cool, that's right. So maybe we can do the recounting with also like differentiating yeah. between Did one. Did I do something one. wrong? I'm happy to correct it. What would you like me to do? Well, there were Just five. Five? Did I do five? Yeah. Yeah. Number yeah. five? Yeah, number five. Aha. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. That is not okay. Okay. Why? Oh, okay. The five. Oh, yeah, remember. Sorry. The five are the observers of the process. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. I remember it in my bed. The observers in the process. You are the giraffe. The number five is the giraffe. Russia. Russia. So, what are the lines? 45 minutes from now on, including coffee break, 45 minutes to work on it. To work on it. Please ask me again, shall, shall I repeat again? Before you leave. Uh, just last, before, before you leave, I just summarize. You're going to be in a group, there are going to be two mediators and one observer. Okay? The four parties are going to explain the problems they have up, up there in the north. You will write down a few problems you have, what you want, what options you have, but you have to come back in the room with a solution. Okay? That's the objective. You come up with a solution. As bad as it is, but you come up with a solution. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe some uh, logistics. And the second one, who is the director in Switzerland of, is French too, uh, of Sion, Kurt Bush, Jacques Wilhelm Schmidt. And you can Google him as well, anything he wrote about mediation. He wrote something called <coughs> Mediation et bien, something like that. Something about Greenway. Jacques Bonafé Schmidt and Jacques Salzer. About the two French. Okay, that's the first step. So now we're going to thank you for your question. Uh, and thank you for thank you for making my unconscious become more conscious. So um, before closing, uh, what is interesting to me? and for you is not the solution you came up because who cares and I really give you afterwards the very solutions we found uh, uh, in Bamako which is the solution for these people at that time with those generals it might have been different with other people but what is of interest to me is A where were you stuck and why and what happened what happened that you didn't understand 
what I ask you to do. You see, where, where were your problems? And from there, we can give you answers. You see what I mean? I think that's much more interesting. So please understand that A, we are incredibly imperfect, everybody, so we don't really care about solutions, and B, we want to know where, where didn't it work? Where were you stuck? And where did you have resistance? Okay? Or where did you get uh, annoyed or, uh, you know, not interested? So, seven minutes for the so-called solutions, if you have some, <coughs> and three minutes for the process, or vice versa, depending on what your group wants to do. Okay? So, we would like to hear group A, one, if it's possible. Group one. Um, I, it was free. Either you are incredibly democratic and everybody is on stage, or you are an elected speaker, or the mediator is a speaker. I left that open as well, but you see how important it is. <laughs> So we have, of course, the same conflict that we were resolved. And we used the same framework that was provided initially of identifying the problems, the wants, the options, and the solutions. And then we actually have this like a matrix with the actual actors and stakeholders in the conflict. Right? So we just kind of filled in the matrix. Uh, so each, each stakeholder had a chance to answer these questions mm -hmm. from their own perspective. That's important, that yeah. each stakeholder has its possibility to express itself. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it, it, it could be quite methodical if you want it to be, but I, I think one of the challenges is that it's an emotional conversation and you can't really stay in a methodical way of doing things or attacking each thing sequentially, because each stakeholder would kind of land and go off in different areas. So initially I started off being able to capture things sequentially, but then the conversation really kind of blew up, so I was kind of all over, right? And so I think that was kind of challenging, bringing it back in line with the kind of framework we yeah, thanks. Do you, do you have any comments on that? Or? Yeah, well, I would say they were, they were all actually quite cooperated from yes. the beginning. So it sort of led into, they, they showed an ability to speak as one another. So I thought maybe I might as well let them. Mm -hmm. But then I have the feeling it went a bit too far. Yeah, yeah. And at first I was quite happy that the gentleman from Numisma was sort of a acting himself as an astronomer, yes. as a mediator. Yes. So I thought, well, that's a nice idea, and he's new end, so why not? Yeah, yeah. 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 Good idea. Yeah. And, but then I wondered, is it, how good is it that he really took this strong position and offered himself mm -hmm. as ongoing, like, uh, neutral, coordinating mm -hmm. actor yeah. for the, uh, Joint command. Uh, yes. 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 Very important point. Um, you always will have in groups. Yeah, sorry, I, I, okay. before I forget. Um, and then, can we have a timekeeper? Otherwise, we're going to be here at night. I know myself. So, <laughs> so, what did I want to say? Yes, in every group, you have people who talk all yeah. the time. So, it's very important that the mediator one says, Listen, I am here as a guarantee for a kind of fair distribution of the word, of the speaking. And I will make sure that if you spoke now about five minutes, the other party has about the same time. Would you agree on that? Because this is not negotiable for me. Because otherwise, you would understand we just add conflict to conflict. Because there's always one who speaks. And the problem is that the, uh, the, the solution is never 
with the one who speaks. The solution is always with the one who doesn't speak. So, uh, because he, you know, he refrains from speaking and everything. So it brings, the, the mediator is the guarantee of fairness, neutrality, impartiality, and equity in time of speaking. And don't be shy to say, thank you very much, I mean, you know, with your character. Thank you very much, sir. It was terribly interesting to listen to you for about 55 minutes. And, uh, you know, but I would so much like to hear her uh, point of view as well. Yeah. And I want really this story to be fair. Yeah. So I understand you're Mr. Serval and you're Mrs. Minusma. So now we have five minutes for her, but completely with you, you are full, you have uh, our full attention. Yeah. And you are the guarantee of that. If you don't do that, you have chaos. <coughs> yep. We did not structure the process. You have to structure, yeah. I have one question. When they answer the one question, did you not have a dilemma about want versus need, want versus interest? I may want everything, but they may need something different. Yeah, well, the needs really, actually, the wants and the needs were the same, we really found out. And, uh, the same? Well, the French actually needed autonomy and control over their own military, right? But Mali actually wanted control as well. So. The, what we, we decided was that we needed a joint command structure. And, but the way we achieved that is we divided the labor. We divided the labor between letting Mali be the ground troops and actually France, because they had the money and the technology and the hardware, actually support and provide backup for them. So it, we kind of came to a consensus. But I think that was one of the biggest issues. Do you all agree? Yes, and I mean, major general or me in that role was making some problems, so if you know, I mean, yeah. it was not that easy process. But yeah. And, uh, but yeah, and another point, what you said, some of the personalities kind of took over, and the actual main stakeholder was sitting quietly. And so we were just completely, and, and that was addressed. And, uh, this is my, my very long experience. People who are refraining from speaking, yeah are 80% of the time the one who the solution. Yeah. So you have to go and say, Mrs., um, what do you think about that? Or what is your opinion? I would be really interested. How, how do you see it? Look at things. How do you see that story? Yeah. You see what I mean? You have to get them from the back. Because we are in a society where, unfortunately, people, when they speak, they take power. Yeah. But we want, as mediator, to make shut up the people yeah. who talk too much and have the possibility for others to emerge. Yeah. And interesting, one of the big dilemmas was the French had all the technology, so that was a concern. And I think this comes to like stakeholders' roles. Absolutely. We actually had the peacekeepers brokering arms deal between France and France. <laughs> <Excellent. laughs> and I, I think as a right. leader, I was like, wait a minute. I, so I think roles were kind of an important thing. And then the final thing I, I found interesting is that we agreed on many things over and over and over again, but we continued to debate it. And so, yeah. as, the media, as the mediator, I kept bringing it back, and I, I was able to use this matrix and say, you already agreed to this, right? And I kept saying, you agreed to this. Agreed to this. Really, really, what I, one of the techniques in mediation you can have, and I sometimes use it because I use my drawers depending on how you know, I feel and how I slept and, and how the people are. But one of the things I can do is, okay, you have said what you want, you've said what you want, you said how you felt, blah, blah, blah. And I said, okay, so actually, can we agree on what you disagree on? Mm -hmm. So I can write here, okay, agree, agreement on disagreement. Mm -hmm. And then you find out, <laughs> so it's true, very, very efficient. And then you find out that, there are not so many disagreements, actually. So, oh, you say, okay. So on that one we agree, on that one we agree, on that one we agree, fine. And then you really, you, 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 you support yourself on that and say, okay, so we have already a lot of ground that is uh, uh, positive. And in the end, you can really say, we are nearly already shaking hands here. You know, um, make it smaller. And one of the things of this morning, I would not do the same. 
But please understand that it's a different way of doing an apple pie, huh? Everybody does its own apple pie. I would not spend too much time on the storytelling of the past. Mm -hmm. Because if you cling, excuse me, if you cling to the past like that, you know, and my story, and he was horrible with me, you redo the same story. So you want, in my perspective, a short, expl a short explanation of what has happened in the past, and how horrible A was, and how horrible B was, and so on, and then move on to, okay, mm -hmm. now we want what? So the new mediation style now is spend less time on what has happened mm -hmm. and move forward towards the future. Because the idea is that we want to have a relationship. We don't want to look back and say, that we, you know, we, we killed nearly each other last year, so that's mm -hmm. past. We want to go here, explain a little bit what happened and move immediately now to, okay, what and does it work really want? Does it work if I go back to this morning to the Ukrainian example, which is not an example maybe, but where oh, Angie said, yeah. Yeah, okay, but where Angie said something like, We'll have all the stakeholders do their storytelling as long as we need it. Well, I, I, I disagree with that. Okay. You, you personally. Yeah. Because then you, spa, you spend do 500 the hours with the past. Yeah. It's almost like in Zen cooking. You know, Zen cooking said that you have to make a cake and you have to make your cake now. With, with yeah. the ingredients you have okay. under the, yeah. the hand, you know. The, sometimes you know the yeah. receipt, sometimes I don't know. The, the but part, you have to put yeah. them all together and exactly. make the cake. The part one is only yes. yeah, I give you the word. The exactly. part one is only here yeah. so that we know where we start from. Yeah. But we don't want to spend two hundred hours about, you know, uh, in two hundred and fifty before Christ this was happening and that was happening. <laughs> yeah. No, you want now a small summary and from there. What is it you want? Yeah. So who had a question, madam? I suggest to go on to group two. Oh, yeah. Wait, can we so, yes, sorry. Sorry. So, yeah. yeah. Can we maybe just summarize our, our, our peace <laughs> on, our peace on boy? We had a <laughs> terrific <laughs> summary of <laughs> the final. <laughs> and if you can provide it, but well, we finally came up with it. If you would read it down at the bottom, actually. You know, it's, yeah, read it out. I can barely. Oh, okay. I can read it. I can't I'm ready, really. Sorry. And we all can agree on this. Um, OK, so we agreed on a joint coordinated operation command Structure and capacity building within a human rights framework with our overall. Approach. Not bad. Yeah. You're not far from what yeah. has really yeah, happened. Yeah. I tell you afterwards. It's not far. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. good. Yeah. Excellent. I think you were a nice team. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, it's not a judgment. It's the feeling I have from your energy is yeah. what might happen. Yeah. 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 But I mean, not uh, uh, an evaluation. It's the feeling I have. Yeah. Uh, it's subjective. Okay, thank you, madam and gentlemen. Um, number two, group number two, who is the speaker? The idea is either you spend a lot of time on the solutions, or you spend a lot of time on the, on the process, but you make sure you, uh, you know, one and the other. If you take 150 minutes to, to name the speaker, it's like... <laughs>
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so we, um, we, we basically took a, a inverse approach and um, given the fact that there are four generals, they're used to giving orders, not taking commands. So I, um, as co-mediator, uh, set the stage for asking them for their end objectives each. Mm -hmm. And then we wrote them down. Excellent. Which, by doing that, set the stage for then what would be the issue or solution side of the um, part. Um, so first, what we noticed is after having them all write down their objectives, we then circled, you know, different variable words that we felt were agreement related. Can you just give us one or two objectives? Peace was one. Yeah. Um, the other was. Is that uh, is that an objective? Well, it, it was it was more of a consensus building objective that okay. peace is stability. Okay. Fine. Um, I buy that. And yeah, but an established an established army was a. Okay, because uh, as I said, the other gentleman before, especially in these type of exercises, try to be as specific as Well, here, here, so I'm going to I'll give it to you real quick. Stabilize the country, contribute, uh, uh, contribute to the elections. Right, right. Organization of new uh, unofficial social secretary uh, to be part of the team, to be respected, to uh, establish the army, and especially everything came to a couple of words uh, that were chain of command. Yes, exactly. And responsibility. And responsibility. Yeah, that's right. the the word responsibility right. was the most After important. the contributions of each part, so we get yes. to the chain of command is our, is our <coughs> where we want to go to. And everyone, sort of, each general sort of got there. Yeah. So as a result of that, then, but it, it took, that's the 80% of the process. So then we started with 20% of the issue of how to solve uh, the chain of command process or the protocol to get there. And the general for the Mali army um, spoke, uh, since his stakeholder sort of was the, the focus, if you will, of the nation. Um, uh, the one thing that happened that was interesting is the general for the French army uh, when the general from the Mali army asked, well, how long is he here to be here? Yeah. Uh, the general from the French army sort of said 15 years and said, let's caucus. <laughs> so we actually did caucus real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I said, you know, so, so in that caucus, I said to the general, well, you may want to consider your own stakeholders back home, whether or not they would approve you say, sending this edict down here. And in the caucus, I also remember the, the Mali arms that maybe they were not very well prepared yet because we were talking about African nation. So you used the caucus. Yeah, I used the caucus to talk to him, and I remember he. Okay. Yeah, in the caucus too. That they were not very well prepared yet, okay. so they were. Yeah, maybe they need more training. Okay, we right. also talk. Um, he right. agreed. So, so, yeah. and one thing I did make a point is as as we walk away from the caucus, the French general I said, but that's up to you. So I I sort of made sure that. I didn't want to talk down to the general and say, you can't do this, you're not a dictator, but rather inform or enlighten, perhaps, and not thinking of their political influences back home and the decision makers in France. Excellent. And then we walk back to the table. At that point, um, the two generals, um, uh, sort of, I think, or actually the three, because the United Nations general, I'll just say the UN general, was sort of focused, obviously, on the humanitarian issues. Sure. We didn't get there. We were about to, but the bell kept going, so we couldn't. So we all <coughs> deference to the UN general. I think that would have sort of come into play. Yeah. But amongst the three generals, the African mm -hmm. Union, or League, the Mali general, and the French general, there was an agreement, at least. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, philosophically, you would have been there, too, that there was, a, there was a need for a phased out command and control. And who would have led that command and control? We didn't sort of get to that agreement. Okay. I would like to say that they were very, well, good mediators. He was leading very well and he was all the time giving time, the, the same time for each person to talk and really directing the, the talk. Yeah. Excellent. I like the fact that you made focus <coughs> and that you tried really to respect each. Um, I think everybody wants to be respected, as you said, and wants to have its importance, whether you have 2,000 soldiers or, or 5,000. And you have to give some equity, and that's really the basics as well in, in the 
in, the, in South Africa, if the story had been in the Commission for Truth and Reconciliation about balance between how many people were killed and how many people did you kill, you see, uh, uh, then there would have never been an either in Rwanda nor in South Africa. At one point, whether you have 2,000 soldiers or 5,000, you have to give the people an entity and the same weight. Okay? As a unity, you weigh that. You have that task and you will do that as a peacekeeping force. And if the mediator really empowers that, then the people respect each other. Okay? And then you don't have only one speaker who is the French one because he has a lot of money. Okay, or because he has a lot of power. So thank you for mentioning that. It's a power mediator is responsible for the power balance. Okay? Yeah. Thank you, group um, two or three. <laughs> Excellent work. Yeah, I think we leave it there. Next group. <laughs> <laughs> you need a... Um, yeah? So you are group uh, three? Four. 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 Okay. <laughs> 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 Four women generals. Like for a we started out with a grid and tried to fill in each one of the areas so that we can find common issues and common, common um, solutions. Interesting, um, I can remember the grid issue. Yeah. Thank you. Um, you know, we focus on the content of, of the uh, issues more than anything else. I don't know that we spend a lot of time <coughs> Really doing mediation process? Well, the, the form and the content is Well, if I remember, it was actually more or less like we tried to do the mediation in the beginning, we started. Yeah. Um, so we had a small discussion in the beginning, which went well because you did it by force, like I give you some time, I give you some time, I give you some time. So finally, <laughs> that, that was okay, actually for all of us, I think. Uh, but then again, we came across also that. Um, there was a kind of lack of information between us in the group. So we like kind of, uh, okay, where are we? What's Mali? What's actually the problem? Do we have grip of the content? And then we said, okay, let's keep with the mediation for a while and talk about talk about what's going on. And in this discussion, we came actually to the same things you did, yeah. but in another sense. Not like mediation, but we also came to, okay, it's about the coordination problem as well. Very and how are we going to solve it? And we know, of course, even if we're not, we're not in our roles, yes. sometimes... Oh, I'm so happy to be uh, Yeah, well, we, we were stuck so Can you remember that as no. mediators? Yeah. If you are stuck one day, I think it's fantastic. I'm so happy. But you only learn when you're stuck. You are going to become good mediators if you have faith. 20 mediations, you start, you start with, <laughs> then you can talk about mediation. If you are stuck in a mediation, why don't you start the tool called, let's have a conversation, yeah. okay? So let's leave it and, and yeah. really play, yeah. sorry, play the dummy, kind of, um, what, what, what was the general, what's, um, what, who is there, what, what army is there? And then you kind of talk yeah. and you did that perfect. This is a fantastic way when you are in a mediation to get out of it and to have the car running again. So please use it because conversation means what? Means dialogue. It means the people talk together. This is what you want. So so if that happens, please empower it. But the funny thing was, what happened was that we all more or less came in our role, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Like, like Khalil was 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 France. You who are you? Yeah, France? Oh, France. Yeah, yeah. 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 Normal dialogue, he suddenly says, like, well, here I am, I want to be in control. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. So we kind of, so, 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 so,
Because the overall objective of mediation is to keep the dialogue running. What you would like to avoid is that people get up and eat the negotiation table. So as long as they are talking together, and that A says to B, listen, didn't quite get it, what is exactly the minusma doing here? And people talk together, let it run. And after a while I say, okay, maybe we can summarize that, or uh, where are we now? But leave it. I think this is fantastic what happened to your group, really. Especially if you came to the same conclusion. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, well, we didn't come to a real solution like this is this is how we're going to do it. Okay. It's really like any, like, we have to go have kind of joint coordination together. Then you uh, might have asked artists. the mediator, yeah, I'm yeah. a mediator to maybe or facilitator to write it down what you came up with. Maybe mm -hmm. in the end the mediator could come back and say, okay, <laughs> let me now summarize yeah. what what well, I we, we came to the same conclusion without yeah. working out it, working it out in such nice detail as a colleague said. Yeah. But basically, it, it was clear the French weren't going to get the command, so. Okay. We jumped basically from the problems and needs straight into the solution. Okay, but you command, want to be then, yeah? a bit, bit more specific and you want yeah. to go through a process because otherwise yeah. it, it's not sustainable. If you have somebody saying you do that, it's not sustainable. If people find it from themselves, it's sustainable. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. We didn't come to that, but okay. Excellent. Very good. Well, we'll just Another one, one mother point. We saw these folks work so well together. It was very fluid. So I see that. But very generous. <laughs> yeah, very generous. <laughs> generous. Very generous. But I always keep thinking, why don't we put general women? asking if everybody agrees and see during uh, the thing happening you still check is it still okay for you if we are in that dialogue or would you wish to come back to something maybe more structured yeah and don't forget to and come back would you would you double check so would you double check this by words or would you also is there also Sometimes, as long as you see that they feel well, I don't have to ask them. I am really good in tweeting. Yeah, but if she's sleeping, I would say, listen, would you like to come back to mediation or what, what would be your preference? Uh, Are okay. you okay? So <laughs> Something like that. You know. But it shouldn't be, it's not in this case. It doesn't have to be so formal. No, no, no. Uh, but after a while, when the dialogue is kind of finished, you can say, okay, may I summarize for you what we just found, found out now and, and see whether we are still on the same page and see if we can extract something from this dialogue. That's the idea. But if the dialogue is flowing, I mean, I'm here. Okay. Yes. Sometimes the conversation got very passionate and elevated, yeah. and everyone was talking yeah. at once. Yeah. Should you let that go on? No, 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 no. Or stop it? Cut. Okay. Cut. Well, yeah, Cut and say, listen, I would like to give yeah. you, just because we have time constraints, yeah, yeah. I would like to give you two or three minutes. And I would like you to play a game with me. Please. Mm -hmm. I sometimes play that game or ask people to play that game. Can you please think two minutes before you talk mm -hmm. and ask yourself what you want to say to others and why? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And right. then so raise your hand yeah. and say something. Oh, so that then emotional you, dialogue. You diminish is, considerably. Uh, yeah. 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 Emotional dialogue might cause more. Well, like you think, emotional dialogue is okay. I understand that you're, but give five minutes, be equal. Uh -huh. yeah. Because if you are only you emotional, what, what happens with the other four? Yeah. They are angry as well. Mm -hmm. And they feel, you know, they are not being respected, not being understood, uh, or whatever. So it's mm -hmm. important to make sure. She can say something, mm -hmm. she's not sleeping, and then he has, you know, mm -hmm. he can raise his question too. But uh, if you have really a big, big speaker like me, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can really say, listen, why don't you think it over twice? Maybe write down. I said, oh, write, write your question down, and I'll take it later. And then usually it goes away. Okay, another question about that group? No? Last group. Um, do we have men again? General men? Only men? Wow. 
<laughs> so what was your solution? Okay. Uh, that was it you would have, you would agree no, with French, French you uh, uh, with French No, no, no. And when you come back, we uh, have <laughs> 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 with if that is the first impression then <laughs> that was about yeah really i said i love serve people because i worked a lot with them and okay. i said well i like them because they drink a lot <laughs> 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 Everything, <laughs> what are you free? For us, the, the thing that actually I think everybody mentioned, the joint command actually wasn't acceptable on two grounds. First, for the French who were not actually willing to, to be under any command, they actually spe specifically fearing for their casualties. And on the other side, we had two African actors with this, I think it was mentioned before, with this colonial argument. Mm. I think they were not feeling comfortable being under any kind of French authority in that sense. But probably they're fearing for the long liberty of this mission. So for us, we actually came to the conclusion of dividing the north on four areas, which would be controlled by four parties in this sense. Ah, one month. Yes. And then basically there'll be joint just joint decision on how to divide. And there will be at the same time there will be actual training of Mali troops by both by EU and French to take over in some so we it's limited a period of time. So basically that was our conclusion. I see both are raising hands. So. Would you also agree that sort of to divide these um, the, the command areas would be just a temporary solution yeah. and that we would revisit it in order to assess whether that was actually functional or not? Good. Mm -hmm. So we're having it sort of just a limited a sort of a, um, a probation yes. um, period. So but train me or train Mali at the same time. I think that will actually answer both both dilemmas both on the African side and on the French side because French will then actually be certain that there will be no casualties on their side and Africans will have actually would feel that they have the power in their own hands actually that they're controlling their own sovereignty and actually the country in that sense because that was I think the biggest fear in our case for actually the case of Mali Army which was sorry? Completely. Completely was fear on their side and actually this fear for of sovereignty that would be lost with sure. French intervention so Actually, there was the main division, but it was also very clear because the yes. French on one side and African mission on the other side. Mm -hmm. that was also uh, but I like your idea, Madam. Uh, it's the fact that whatever solution you choose, you want to check it regularly if it's still valid and if it works. A. B. You want to be sure that in case the people change, the general X becomes a general Y. And you know people make their positions and not positions of people. So you have to rediscuss the whole story. So you want to check that when new people arrive, if that is still okay for them and if they understand what's expected from them. And thirdly, never, never hesitate to change when a group agrees to change because they think it's not valid again. It's stupid to think to cling on a thing that's not valid because you think it should stay. Okay? So be flexible. It worked three months. Fine. Yeah. Find a new solution. The idea is that you are creative and that people can regularly um, uh, be, agree with you what you're doing. They are on your side and they feel represented. That's important. Yeah. I just have a dilemma with that proposal because the which, main, sorry, which proposal? The divide division into four because uh, yeah. that means you're dividing the peacekeeping force into one area. Mm -hmm. What happens to the other areas? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I wasn't in the group. Uh, I mean, yeah, um, peacekeeping is peacekeeping for the entire country. Not but if you want to tell us that we will do peacekeeping in one area? Peacekeeping is not necessarily in one area. They decided on, a, on their ground, they decided that. Mm -hmm. The peacekeeping work, I don't know, in region B, let's say they divide in A, B, C, D, the region of the, the northern Mali. Peacekeeping work in B, and other people refer of humanitarian or human rights issues to the peacekeeping forces on a regular basis, for example. Everything is possible as long as it works. You see what I mean? There is no uh, decision. 
uh, as military as it, as it might sound, that uh, has to be uh, accepted by everybody forever. You can change it. Sure, it would be better. Then you can maybe negotiate and say, okay, let's start with region B for peacekeeping. And let's see if I can work on B and C. You see, then everything is worth again negotiating. But start with an agreement. You see what I mean? And be flexible. An agreement is better than nothing. So say yes in the beginning, negotiate afterwards. Yes? You see what I mean? Instead of saying, no, I want to be everywhere, and then woof, it stuck, it's stuck again. You say, okay, let's start with region B. Maybe I want to be sure by December I want to cover B and C, and if it doesn't work with my hierarchy in New York, let's see how it works. But let's start like that, at least we have an agreement. Wait. Um, you had a question? Yeah. Uh, I'm talking about the new, if, the, if there are new generals or new leadership. Yes. Does, uh, doesn't any agreement is uh, normally uh, must be confirmed uh, by any future leader? I know that there might be exceptions, but the norm is that it has some kind of duration. It should. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. Normally, if a general B uh, follows general A, he should follow the agreements. But the problem is that as he was not at the negotiation table, he doesn't see it is that way. So he wants to be included. So because everybody, we have such big egos, he wants to put his own you know, little pepper and salt in it. So he wants it to be rediscussed. So give everybody the possibility to be recognized as unique, saying to General B, hey, listen, let's you know, gather again together and see whether maybe you want to add something. You, you understand? Mm -hmm. It's about egos and about making sure that you <coughs> included everybody. But you, if you have a big general coming and you say, hey, this is what we have decided for you, guess what? He's going to say, oh, I don't want it. So, uh, say, this is what has happened so far. We would like to know if you could agree, and why don't you come over and see whether you can stick to that, or if you have additional ideas you could bring. You see the difference? And that, then you have him on board as well. Yeah? Okay. Uh, questions? Yeah. Oh, the process. Um, well, I have two things I, I, I might mention. First, we had, uh, just quickly, then. we had a, an illustration of an interest-based mediation where initially the French had a very extreme position. We are the only ones that want to be there. Um, so obviously that wouldn't have worked. But then um, he had a chance to explain why. So that's kind of going from positions to interest. And his concern was for the safety of his troops. Excuse me, why was it? Why? You know, but, uh, you said he, he had the chance to say why. My question is why? Uh, what was the answer to the why? Safety. Oh, he was concerned for the safety of his troops if there were other people involved in the operations and commanding them, for example, like this. So it's not that he just wanted to be the, his own forces there. Uh, he, he explained the reason. And because he explained the reason, then uh, the parties were able to start addressing that. So um, maybe do some joint training exercises uh, and so on. So, yeah. To me, that was an illustration of exploring why people have that in their position. Yeah, very important. very important. Why? And two, um, it has to do with, I guess, we're pressured for time, and we were discussing this with you. And I was interested in other groups. Did mediators uh, offer their own solutions? Because I have to admit that, um, like, with this division of the territories, uh, when we had five minutes left and they were still arguing about <laughs> who has the right to be there or things like this. And um, he told us that it's important to be very strict and say, you, option, you, option, like this. Yes. Um, we, we kind of weren't able to do that, so... We offered suggestions. Well, I'm not. Yeah. yeah, you have two people who would like yeah. to talk to you. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you offered two options, one and two, and then it was us who said, actually, let's go for option two, and on the long run, go to option one. So basically, it gave us an indication that we are the ones who are going to Yes, and your intervention? Well, Sir, um, yeah. you know, I mean, it's okay. I, I, since, our, since you were there, I, we offered suggestions, I, I think, not solutions. 
would that be a fair statement? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Again, balloons were floating. I'll, I'll say I, I don't know if I maybe offered a suggestion by a question. If that makes sense. Yes, yeah. and, and it was just discussion. on the point of the French had the hardware and military technology, yeah. Yeah. whereas the Malali had the ground forces. Yeah. And so I just said, is there a division of labor here? Yeah. I don't know if that's. Hmm. I can give you the answer I gave to the gentleman during the tea time, but that's my answer. Please uh, have a look if it works for you. It has been psychologically proven that, like for children, when children understand something by themselves, it stays and they apply it. So even if the parent knows that if you put your finger in the, the plug and get an electricity shock, um, sometimes it's good that the child experiences it for a few seconds. So the mediator should be able to make a balance. The mediator should have the same position, which means it is far better. And I really swear, how many times I thought, oh, it's so obvious. I have the solution. Here is the solution. And I thought, Brigitte, it's now really urgent that you shut up. So here I am saying, okay, where we find it? Here we find it. But you have to let people at their own rhythm find ways of meeting each other because you don't have to forget they are enemies. And sometimes we are like animals. I mean, you know, I'm kind of a Okay, and leave. <laughs> so you see how you can approach the person. But the mediator, if the mediator says, now you are friends, it doesn't happen. So you have to allow a hell of a lot of time of adaptation, dialogue, and going really to Oslo to come back to Sydney and to end up in Geneva. Please accept that, because it's the only way for mediation to be sustainable. You can't manipulate or no, and no. say and let them think they came up with it, for example. <laughs> no, no, because, well, yes, welcome I and happy world. I mean, I you know, if I say, hey, hey, you know I, what, you know, join, join command. I come in as a mediator and say, hello, we're going to mediate about forces. What about the joint command? <laughs> 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 it, it, it does not work. It works. Really, it works when it comes from people. Yeah. And don't forget, people are at war. Yeah. So they have to, you know, for a while, they have to dig in like that and say, OK. And then a little bit like that. And, like, and the mediator has to be patient. Uh -huh. Even if you know the solution mm -hmm. or if you have an idea, you have to wait at least for two hours. Uh -huh. Please. Because otherwise, it doesn't stay. Right. It's my, my experience. Huh? Yeah. It's, um, 10 past 5 now, so okay. I suggest we started a little bit later, be taking the picture, so still 15, 20 minutes. What picture? Yeah. The group picture. We, oh, we took, we took no, 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 she's saying that. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah that's okay. why I said we started a little bit later yeah, and I suggest okay, so to go on. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the speaker, maybe you wanted to add something. No, no, the thing is, I, in, in principle, I, this is, I, I agree totally with this philosophy, okay. and I try to apply it as much as possible. Yeah. It's just that in that situation, yeah. when we have five minutes, yeah. we didn't have time to give to let them, uh, you know, sort this out. So, and I, I know it's the wrong thing to do. But it's just the less, <laughs> I just said the less, less successful. But yeah. wrong, nothing is wrong. Yes, sir. I also fully agree with the principle, but what if the conflict is violent and the people are just stuck? Yeah, you have the coffee. And then, no, no, stuck in terms of solutions. Uh, are you not allowed to flow? Flow. Sorry, he interrupted. Are you not allowed to flow? What if questions? What yes. if? What if? Then you have a series, no. and they decide. You don't decide. Okay, yeah. you you may pop up with questions like. Let's say you're stuck in my story of mine, okay? <clears throat> and then you say, okay, I see you don't come forward. So what, what happens, let's say one morning you have two people dead in front of the um, 
main house in Gao. Okay? Who, who is responsible for that? Because I still play the dummy. I still don't understand how it works. And have you sorted out the question of, I don't know, who is responsible here? Play it like that. Sure. But too direct, what happens if you have two dead body on a Sunday morning? Mm -hmm. uh, then, then be careful not to be top down as a mediator mm -hmm. because it frightens people. And I have seen so many mediators saying, hey, what happens Monday morning when you have two dead people? And the guy, he, he, <laughs> you know, the mediator forgot that the guy is at war with the other and you are supposed to enhance dialogue, not to play the teacher or not to, you see? So don't, don't do it too formally. The what if is okay <coughs> can be very aggressive. <coughs> Go around, be, but it's my style, huh? be a little bit flowery, a little bit, uh, okay, <coughs> let's say you have two, two dead people. So who is, who is taking them, where, and did I get something in, didn't quite hear, is, is who is responsible actually here, uh, is Serval or, um, is that for peacekeeping forces? Or, you know, have it run like that. Not too direct, not teacher-like. Teacher-like, zero. Because you have people kind of, they hate it. They hate it when you have somebody say, like, but more, okay, how does that happen? Did, did I answer your question? Do you I see you totally disagree with me and I'm very happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? I still think there's a, a role for for what if questions in okay. very very difficult situation where violence is happening. No problem. Where people are killing each other. I think it's very appropriate sometimes. Yes. That's the point that I think. Be careful of the way of the tone of voice and the way you phrase it. <coughs> My experience is if it's too direct, people <coughs> treat. Mm. Say, what does he want to know now? You see? And we are not in a mediator role. We are when people are like that. You never have to forget you have two people in conflict, and the idea is you help them to talk together, mm -hmm. not to look back in front of the others. Mm -hmm. So a mediator is never a catalyst. Is never a catalyst. What do you mean by catalyst? Float ideas. <coughs> to float ideas. An accelerator. In a way, yeah. You can ask what. What responsibilities do you have, or uh, but not too direct? Mm -hmm. It's just a question of, again, it's a question of how you do it. But in the in the concrete case here, now I mean, you raised it, and your question really goes in the same direction. Yeah? So the French are saying, I want to be the boss, full stop. Yeah. And the French certainly aren't going to come and say, well, actually, let's share. Yeah. The Africans are saying, we don't want to be told by the French what to do. We need to lead. And it, it may just keep going around in circles because the Africans probably will not suggest the sharing. The French won't either, and you just don't get out. So, yeah, but at one point, if you had done my process, as I asked you, <laughs> the, the first idea was to ask what has happened. What I asked you to be quite concrete. Okay? So, concretely, what does it mean? You, you are very above everything here. Concretely, what happened for each of the party? And then, when you become more specific in the specificity, you can find some solution. No, well, we've done that. We've gone through all of the points. This was right at the end. Okay. Yeah? You know, we've exposed the problems and the needs of our, all of the parties. The French have said, I want to be the boss, and we were stuck. Yeah? Yeah. And so the question was, you know, can you... Do you risk getting into a vicious circle where neither of the parties will come up with actually the idea that they're all prepared to maybe accept? I think it's worthwhile staying for a while. <coughs> Stop. Mm -hmm. I explained before, it's important that each party understands that we're stuck here. Party A doesn't want to move, B doesn't want to move, C doesn't want to move, D doesn't want to move, and then I wouldn't jump to the what if or whatever. As I said, uh, uh, but I didn't, want, didn't have time to do it. I, in the second part, I always start with feelings. And I say, OK, how do you feel about this, this situation? And then through the feelings of the situation, I can come to the needs. 
Okay? And when I am at the various needs, we will see that we actually agree on a various amount of things. And in the end, we will understand that the French won't make it alone. Otherwise, the war is going to continue. So you have to go through the process and accept that for a while, as I said with the tunnel, for a while it is stuck. Accepting that is really taking a lot of modesty and saying, okay, we're stuck. Yeah, obviously. And then you do a round again and say, okay, how do you feel about that? See? And then let people express themselves, the four parties, and really go down, down, down to it. Does that answer in a way mm -hmm. your question? Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, I wanted to ask what to do if one of the parties, the leader of the parties, is mentally sick. Like, for example, um, mentally sick. Like half of the brain, for example, let's say it's black and he doesn't feel any emotions. He's very, very rational, and uh, or opposite. How to do in that case? Because mediation can be stuck easily. Well, if I understand you well, I would certainly start a caucus alone with the person you call mentally sick. And I would ask, talk to the person, and then say, okay, I will spend as much time with the other party as well. And then I would really try to get in contact with the person to understand the frame the mind of the person, the setting, the vision, the, to, to, just to have a relationship with the person to better understand. Okay, may, maybe I named it incorrectly <coughs> because of my English. Yeah, so maybe, maybe you're trying to say irrational actor. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. If you have only rational yeah. actors, not, yeah. not, nobody yeah. wants to go into emotions. Yeah. Is this what you mean? Yeah, 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 but I named it with the wrong word. Yeah, yeah. but you have techniques, and this is where you can really use uh, uh, non-violent communication techniques, yeah. where you, ask, you have techniques saying, listen, okay, you are French, you don't want to give any inch of your power. And you say, okay, how is that? How does that feel? How does that concretely translate in your everyday? And then the person is going to explain a little bit about their feelings. And then immediately we'll see anger, sadness. The emotions will come up. Don't worry. I've never been in, uh, in a mediation where there were no emotions. Never. Yeah. It yeah. comes. People yeah. think they don't show their emotions, but they do. Yeah. They, all, uh, they always do. You <coughs> see what they think, what happens. <coughs> you see what I mean? Yeah. So you don't have to say, we are not in a romantic garden where you say, okay, tonight I feel very compassionate or very happy <laughs> the sky and the moon. It's not about that, the feelings. The feelings is something that explains where your needs are. Mm -hmm. And then when you really, if you follow this Marshall Rosenberg um, uh, pattern, if you hear the feeling of the person, you can immediately translate the need and ask, is it this or that you need? You see what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Fine, um, other question. <coughs> but again, um, don't, don't misunderstand me. Um, it's a little bit your responsibility as mediator to be a timekeeper to be responsible for the process and to cut people after a while saying, okay, I understand your position, I see exactly, but I'm very, very now keen on understanding the other side too. You are the person who is responsible for equi equity. So if, you, if I'm here with you 25 minutes, I mean, you know what happens very often in real peace negotiations. If I'm with you 25 minutes, you know what happens? She has already left. Because she thinks, well, damn it, I don't even exist here. So you have to be really the one, you know, in the boat, saying, okay, five minutes with you, hold on, I got it, I write that down, and now you. What, what is your perspective on that? Rephrasing, reframing, summarizing, making sure, and sometimes using the technique, saying, listen, um, did you understand what his position was? Or shall I, you know, um, shall we... Repeat it together, maybe. Oh, okay, you didn't quite get it. Okay, maybe I didn't get it either, so to make it repeat. And don't hesitate to have repetitions until everybody hears each other's position. Yeah? So it's your responsibility. Any other feedback? 
What did you learn? What did I learn? Yeah. Just in this exercise? Yeah. Okay. Um, trust the process. Don't, Thank you. Don't get blinded by what you want. You are in your boat. You're the captain. Go for it. Yeah, please. Trust it. Thank you. Okay, um, do we have two or three minutes to, one minute left? Mm -hmm. Okay, can I add just one word uh, of what you uh, got from me from in these two hours? Just one word. That's your solution. How? That's your solution. So, um, what happened? Uh, I can say some of the things. Huh? Um, it was impossible for the French to let go of their um, being in charge. What they accepted, because they brought the money and they were the first in, and they uh, voted in the um, United Nations Resolution Council and everything. So they were the starting point. So in a way, they were the chair, but as exactly said, I think it was your group, of a unit that was a coordination unit. Mm -hmm. Okay? The, it, this coordination unit was not represented by the generals, because the four generals didn't want to come every week to discuss with everyone. So they appointed four um, representatives of the coordination unit, okay? And the chair, it was not the decision making, the chair of this coordination unit were the cash, okay? That was the first thing. But I think the main interesting thing, and I'm very happy about that, and I'm happy that we had a mediation, we an, installed them on, on, on a suggestion I made, it was not a what if, but it was an idea saying, uh, listen, what happens, what, if? What, if, what happens if we have many dead tomorrow morning? Okay, so it's, uh, it's about the same uh, um, process. Um, in every important city like uh, Thessalit, Kidal, Gao, and Timbuktu, we had a complaint bureau where everybody, everybody, NGOs, population, army could come, mm -hmm. fill in a form, and this form would then be brought to the coordination unit, which would address in their weekly meeting the problem in Kidal of, I don't know, two dead people, the problem in Tessalit where, I don't know, something was not done, and then redistribute the things, which gave the population the impression that they participated in a way to their, um, to the peace keeping and peace maintaining of their area. So we have really the top down and the bottom up. And how this information was given to the community, for example, that they were able to make? It was given, oh, don't, don't worry, uh, in Mali they are extraordinarily quick, by word of mouth, and, and uh, there are lots. Mali has had more than 50 years of uh, development cooperation at quite a high level. High level. And um, there are many women who distributed the information and um, the radio. Um, there were the administrative work and not only the army, but the gendarmerie, um, women, the peace groups. <coughs> Everybody was informed uh, that there was, uh, and I think it was on TV, on TV, there is a complaint bureau in the main conflict cities mm -hmm. where you can bring your dolences about what has happened linked to human rights and army. That's, uh, actually, that's what our UN peacekeeping representative suggested, was uh, monitoring and yeah. uh, human rights training. Uh, this is something else. This is something else. It's, it's a bureau where Mrs. and Mrs. Nobody from Mali could come in and say, I have first made this problem there. So fill in a form. The form went up, went centralized to the Dolian's uh, Bureau of the uh, Coordination Unit, and they discussed it uh, once a week. So it worked well all the idea um, I just uh, I suggested something in for the population. I said how um, uh, how and I said well listen I have two dads in front of my door tomorrow morning. What do I do? What could I do? Where could I go? And they said well maybe because they are really Malians are very advanced uh, 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 have very advanced structures. 
So uh, they immediately came with the idea, oh, a broad balance, that's a factor. Mm -hmm. and, so uh, and, and what form it would it have? And then I said, okay. And then how would you, how would it work? And specifically, okay. like, like that. Okay. okay. Voilà. So thank you very much for your attention, and I hope you will be excellent mediators in the future. Thanks a lot. <laughs>